At the very first meeting on the 1st of February 1937, there were many notable drivers of the era, including Les Murphy, who'd won the Australian Grand Prix in 1935, driving his P-Type MG. Jack Day was on the racing committee of the RECV at the time, and also a light car club member. Jack was a real motivator of motorsport as far back as 1911. He drove his Bugatti with an American V8 engine at that first Rob Roy meeting. Finishing behind Jack Day was Tom Luxton at his Lagonda. Tom Luxton actually started the McEwan's retail stores throughout Melbourne. And of course, that must have financed his motor racing to a large degree. But it was Jack Day who set the fastest time of the day in 1937 at 37.39 seconds. But remember, the road then was unmade. Bill Lowe who drove at Rob Roy in that first event and I've got photographs of him coming up through Tin Shed Corner and there's great plumes of dust coming from his wheels. It must have been fantastic. Of course, Rob Roy at the time was just purely dirt. It wasn't until later that they put bitumen on the track uh, for the 1938 meeting. Uh, just prior to the Australian Hill Climb Championship in 1938, George Martin, the light car club president at the time, was over in the UK. He was able to entice a couple of internationals to come to race at that meeting. One of them was Peter Whitehead, who raced at the Bathurst Grand Prix in 38, won that, and then came down here to Rob Roy to compete. With Peter Whitehead and Alan Sinclair coming to the meeting, the crowd was fantastic. The documented crowds of several thousand came to the hill climb on that day. Two of Peter Whitehead's main competitors were Jack Day and Tim Joshua. Unfortunately for those two drivers, they had accidents on their second run. Peter Whitehead kept improving on each run, and as he came around Skyline, you could see the dust just coming off the wheels under full pressure. As kids, we'd been very interested in, in motorsport because her father was a member of the light car club and had done several trials. And we've got the English magazines, and I realised that Peter Whitehead, who I've been reading about, was coming out and uh, my father said, OK, well, I'll take you to Rob Roy Hillclimb where he's competing this weekend. He, he was pretty casual about everything, of course. He wouldn't wear a crash helmet and uh, he, he managed to make fastest time of the day. It was a very impressive sound. I'd never heard a noise like it before. Ted Gray in the Mail Special introduced a new car to Rob Roy had smaller wheels, it was a dirt track type of car, and of course that's what Rob Roy was at the time, a dirt track, and these guys were able to handle that surface so much better than the proper cars. In 1939, the Sun ran an ad that said, expect hill climb records to be broken, and that's when Frank Kleinig, called Dirt Track Charlie, came down from Sydney. To see him on the day in the special, which was a uh, an MG chassis with this great Hudson motor in it coming around through Skyline with the dust flying off his wheels. It must have been fantastic. I was a spectator at, the, at Rob Roy when Frank Kleinig came down from Sydney in the Hudson special, the Kleinig special. And when he, ha he had the bonnet off the car and I just could not believe that a Hudson engine could be so developed. It had four AML carburetors on it chromium plated exhaust pipes going over the top. It had everything that made it go fast. Aluminium cylinder head, all heavily finned for cooling. I just could not believe it. And I went back and had a look at my Hudson engine, which looked so sedate with a single carburetor and a cast iron manifold and an iron head. 
I said, I'm going to copy Kleinig's car. 